Ye lands to the Lord make a jubilant noise. Glory be to God. Oh, serve him with joy in his presence now rejoice. Sing praise unto God out of Zion. Oh, enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Glory be to God. To bless him and thank him our voices we will raise. Sing praise unto God out of Zion. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to pay tribute to all of Zohar mothers, both past and present, with a poem entitled, A Mother's Love. There's no love like a mother's. Her heart is filled with care, with Christ as her example. Her Savior's love she'll gladly share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless all of Zohar's mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all their tears and heartaches and all the special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations. God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for Zohar's mothers who love with higher love from power God has given and strength from up above. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we plead for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given thy only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and hath given us his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he give us power to become the sons of God, and hath promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The psalm for today is the, 20, the 122nd Psalm. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure, May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadel. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will say, 
peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. So far, the Son. We pray. O God, who makes the minds of the faithful to be of one will, grant unto your people that they may love what you command and desire what you do promise that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be securely anchored where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and governs with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is found in the book of Isaiah, the 12th chapter, uh, beginning with the first verse. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have com comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is, is exalted. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. So far our Old Testament lesson. Our epistle lesson is found in the book of James, the first chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So far, in the Epistle lesson. Our Gospel lesson is recorded in the 16th chapter of John, beginning with the 5th verse. And again, we are looking at a section of words spoken by Jesus to his disciples sometime on Monday, Thursday evening. Jesus says, now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Here ends our Gospel lesson. We confess our faith, then, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, awesome and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless plan we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will love our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Our Great be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them, let the desert and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Let them give glory to the Lord and praise and proclaim his praise in the island. The Lord will march, march out like a mighty man. Like a warrior, he will stir up with zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time, I have kept silent. I have kept quiet and held myself back, but now like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and I pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them, and make the smooth places, make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. This is our text. Dear fellow reading. The name for this fourth Sunday after Easter is Cantate Sunday. Cantate is a Latin word meaning, O oh, sing. Psalm 96, Psalm 98, and our text all urge us to sing to the Lord a new song. But if you are like me, there may be times when we do not feel like singing a song. Some years ago, I remember having a flat tire, and then four weeks later having another flat tire, and after the second flat tire, I was not in the mood for singing a joyous song. Currently, we are dealing with the COVID-19 virus. Most of us are off schedule. The virus has made many people fearful. I miss the regular Sunday worship in God's house, and I'm sure you miss it too. For many years on this fourth Sunday after Easter, I've had that custom of taking parts of the liturgy that are normally spoken and finding a way to sing them, and we cannot do that this year. And I'm sure if we merit making a list of disappointing things, we could add many things to that list. Any disappointment does not encourage us to sing joyfully. And yet the Lord, through his prophet here, is urging us to sing. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
And let us note the Lord will triumph over his enemies. The Lord says, these things I will do. And thirdly, let the people give glory to the Lord, the prophet says. The prophet urges us to sing, and then he gives us good reason to sing. The Lord will march, march out like a mighty man. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. This is a military picture, a picture of a mighty warrior going out to battle. Now I realize that the methods of warfare have changed over the years between Isaiah and our present time. But regardless of when you look at history, a good soldier, a mighty soldier in battle is a hero regardless of what weapons he uses. Not only is the warrior strong and mighty, we are promised that this warrior will win a victory. And let me add, it's a victory for you and me. And notice who this warrior is. He is the Lord. Our text follows a nine-verse section describing the servant of the Lord. Remember Isaiah's point of view. He's looking into the future at times, and here he's looking into the future and seeing the coming of our Savior, Jesus. 700 years before it happened, the Lord, through Isaiah, described the servant of the Lord and what he will do for us. The victory that this warrior, the servant of the Lord, will win is the redemption of humanity. I like that expression, the redemption of humanity. Here in Isaiah, the promise is made. In Bethlehem, the beginning of the fulfillment of this promise began. And the climax of this fulfillment occurred on Good Friday and Easter. And so today, you and I can say not only promise made, but promise kept. Isaiah has more to say about the Lord's triumph over his enemies. Isaiah stands about midway between Moses and Christ. He is urging the people to sing a new song. Now, there's the song of Moses that Moses sang that praises the Lord for deliverance out of Egypt. That's past, has, that's past history and is worth singing about. But it's not a new song. I am driving used cars. When I buy a newer used car, the car is new to me. But it's still a used car. It's only a different car. The new song Isaiah urges us to sing is not just a different song, not just an old song that is new to you and me, but a song that is totally new. Yes, with content never before heard of. And we look at Jesus, think about the things that he did that were never before heard of. Look at the servant of the Lord, also named Jesus. He was born of a virgin. Jesus lived a holy life. Pilate found Jesus innocent and yet permitted him to be put to death. Jesus was certified dead. And on the third day, he arose from the dead, and he lives no more to die. All that happened was according to God's plan. Jesus fulfilled all righteousness for us. The Lord laid on Jesus the iniquity of all of us, and he paid the penalty for our sin. In other words, the innocent died for the ungodly. And the empty tomb of Easter assures us that the work of Jesus is for our benefit. Jesus himself said, because I live, you also will live. And so the story of Jesus is the story of our redemption. This redemption is the content of the new song. The Lord did all these things for you and me. And because the Lord can see the future, the Lord revealed things about the future to his prophet Isaiah. And thus the prophet helps us to anticipate 
what the Lord will do. And so we read, For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I pant. Already in the Garden of Eden, the Lord promised the Savior, and the world waited. Abraham waited for the Savior. Moses waited for the Savior. Isaiah saw the Savior coming, but he too still had to wait. And all during this time, the Lord patiently endured the sins of the world, of the many different nations in the world, as well as the sins of his own people. When the time was right, right according to God's plan, and Jesus was born. And when the time is right according to God's plan, Jesus will come again at the end of the world, and Jesus will be coming to judge all people. Now from Isaiah's point of view, he sees both Bethlehem and the end of the world as part of one picture. And here we have a description of what he sees. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I pant. I lay waste the mountains and the hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pool. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our God, we turn back in utter shame. From our point of view, it may seem like the Lord is delaying. From the beginning, that is, Already in Eden, the Lord planned to bring the Savior into the world and to bring judgment upon all who rejected his plan. That's two sides of the same coin, so to speak. Note the double-edged sword here. Clearly the Lord wants to save people. And so the Lord enables spiritually blind people to see and rejoice in the Lord's redemption of us sinners. The Lord gives light to remove people from darkness and bring them into the light. But for those who reject the Lord's redemption, such people will still be in their sins, and because of that will receive destruction, even as a drought lays waste the vegetation and dries up rivers. Isaiah repeatedly points out the folly of the human obsession to fashion a God who thinks and acts like we do. The gods fashioned by the world are indeed worthless. But the Lord, the God who reveals himself through the words of Scripture, Yes, he, the Lord, is real. He is our Redeemer. And note well the promise that he makes to us, as well as to Isaiah's first readers. I will not forsake them. The word them referring to all who put their trust in him, that he is the Lord, people like you and me. Isaiah steers you and me in the direction of proper application of what he has done for us when he writes, Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth, you who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. Let the desert and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Keter lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy and let them shout from the mountaintop. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. It should be abundantly clear from the way the Lord speaks here 
that he desires all people to rejoice in Jesus and sing the new song. From the sea to the mountaintops, from Kedar and Selah to the islands, and keep in mind that Kedar and Selah are places that are east of Jerusalem, and the islands are west of Jerusalem, the Mediterranean area. Yes, to the very ends of the earth, people are being urged to sing the new song. By piling up the expression, the Lord is making clear that he desires all people to sing the new song. Yes, the salvation that Jesus prepared is for all people. And so you and I sing the new song. We rejoice in our salvation. We praise the Lord for redeeming us. And yes, all of this is to the glory of the Lord. All glory belongs to the Lord. And so we sing the new song to the Lord. Amen. We pray. O oh, Jesus, our risen and ever-living Savior, we praise you with our whole being, for you have done wonderful things for us. At the cross we find full forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. There you suffered and died in our place. At the empty tomb we find full comfort, joy, and hope. Your resurrection proves that you are God's Son, whose sacrifice has been accepted for our transgression. All glory, honor, and praise to you, O Savior, for having gotten us the victory over death, the devil, sin, and hell. We further praise you for your word of truth, by which we have been made wise unto salvation through faith. Our Lord and Savior, we praise you for the privilege of prayer which God has given us in your name, for your intercession for us at God's throne, for your never-failing presence in our lives, and constant protection, for your gift to us of the Holy Spirit, for your help in troubles, as well as your healing of our illnesses, and for your comfort to ease our sorrows. We thank and praise you for the home that you are preparing for us in heaven, and your promise to come again and receive us to yourself. We praise you for the hope of the resurrection from the dead, and for the forgiveness of all our sins and the hope of everlasting life. For these and all other blessings, May our tongues be loosed to speak and sing your praise, both now and in eternity. Precious Redeemer, through the Spirit fill us with the desire to feed spiritually upon you the true bread of life. Make your word through which you come to us sweeter than honey to our taste, and let it nourish our faith. Make yourself known as the bread of life to the spiritually starving nations of the world, as you cause the gospel to be preached to them. Oh, that the whole world would learn to praise your name by accepting your salvation, by trusting you for every good and equal blessing. To the glory of your saving name, we ask these things. And we join then in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen.